as soon as you start this class, Art and Science, and maybe the reason you're attracted to this class is because of the separation of art and science, the two cultures. How did this term emerge? Uh, it was actually C.P. Snow, Charles Percy Snow, that delivered a lecture by this title in 1959 in Cambridge. 1959, he was talking about the separation of art and science. And I'm sure you have all kinds of stories of how these art science separations happened. Let's first find out about the man who coined this phrase, C.P. Snow. So first, let's find out more about C.P. Snow, Charles Percy Snow. Uh, he was an English author and physicist, uh, passed away in 1980. He had a very interesting career and a very important position a few positions in the British government. He served as a technical director of Ministry of Labor from 1940, civil service commissioner until the 1960s, parliamentary secretary to Minister of Technology, but at the same time, he was a novelist. And he was particularly noted for 11 related novels known collectively as Strangers and Brothers. Um, this uh, series traces the career of Lewis Elliot from his boyhood in a provincial town through law school and years as a fellow at Cambridge and a government position. It seems to many who analyze these works that it could be a parallel story of Snow himself. But with all the activities and all the work that he's done uh, in government, in science and technology, and literature worlds with all these books he published, his name is synonymous with the idea of two cultures. And it was for one talk that he gave at the annual Reed Lecture at Cambridge on May 7, 1959. The title of Lord Snow's lecture was the two cultures and the scientific revolution. He identified two cultures, on the one side, literary intellectuals and the natural sciences on the other side. And he pointed that the curricula of schools and universities are the source of the problem. I happen to think that this is still the case as many of my colleagues. This is the idea of two cultures, and the reason for this class, really, the overarching reason is to question that separation. So in the essay, which you will read a bit of, he was talking about how it, the separation of art and science or humanities and science leads many capable minds to ignore science as a vocation and prevents us from solving the world's main issue, the wealth gap caused by industrialization which threatens global stability. When C.P. Snow was talking about two cultures, he was talking about the disparity between the rich and the poor. And that was somehow lost in a lot of discussions on two cultures that focuses on disciplinarity and the separations of these disciplines. Uh, he added in 1963 a new essay that was called Two Cultures, A Second Look. And in that essay, significantly, he suggested that a new third culture would emerge, which would close the gap between literally and intellectuals and scientists. It is really significant to note and important to remember that originally the name of his lecture was the rich and the poor. And that was the center of his argument. Here's a quote from C.P. Snow. Before I wrote the lecture, I thought of calling it the rich and the poor. I rather wish I didn't change my mind. 
why does he say that? He was really dissatisfied with the two-culture concept being focused on the idea of literary and scientific intellectuals being separated. His central and urgent argument was peace, food, no more people than the earth can take. That is the cause. And that is why everyone should have literacy in science. Uh, in response to the two cultures and other writings of that genre, Aldous Huxley decided in 1963 to set down his own thoughts on the worlds of rich literature and science, noting that scientists purifies common language to avoid ambiguity, while the poet purifies common language to express the inexpressible. The great novelist then reviews writings in both fields to illustrate this theme. So he goes on to talk about the misunderstandings arise actually from specialized use of language. In other words, if you look at language that emerges from various disciplines, it's really what uh, creates the separation in understanding and in misunderstanding between people in various disciplines. Much later, we jump now to 1995, this debate was ongoing and John Brockman, editor of a book of essays entitled The Third Culture, negates Snow's optimistic prediction that the day will come when literary intellectuals will communicate effectively with scientists. Instead, he makes the claim that contemporary scientists are the third culture and alludes that there is no need to try to establish communication between scientists and literary intellectuals, whom he calls the middlemen. And so what we're seeing with John Brockman is an emergence of another type of elite, uh, intellectual elite, which would be the science and technology elite. One thing you would notice in these discussions of two cultures, one thing that I would like to point to you is the relationship of art that's in the middle of this. In other words, really these discussions are about humanities and sciences. Um, the artists are somehow in between negotiating this. So now we'll ask a few questions for you to think about before we go into our second part of the Two Cultures lecture. Look at um, the names of the authors, contributors to John Brockman's book, and notice what is the one thing that they have in common. And then the other question I would like you to answer and think about in relation to your own life is how would you define the idea of the third culture? If you were imagining the connection of these worlds in the educational context that you're in, how would you de define that? And finally, I would like you to take a look at um, some of the videos that mark the 50th anniversary of the lecture of C.P. Snow. 50 years have passed. So it's been 50 years that this idea of two cultures was put out in 1959. And C.P. Snow made it very clear that he believes that it's the curricula and the universities that create the separation. I have been in classes where students told me that they have never been to the other side of campus or outside of their department. So one of the challenges I would like to pose to you is to go to the opposite side of your major as part of your assignment. And um, let's continue with the two cultures. <laughs>